you, Dennis. Continue to the great work you're doing to connect investors with entrepreneurs. And now it's really exciting, a new addition to CU Ag Tech Week. The team held an Ag Tech Hackathon to encourage student interest in this unique sector. Thanks to our generous sponsors, Bear and John Deere, who both provided a problem set to engage students and get them excited about the Ag Tech environment. More than 60 students from all over campus, including the College of Aces, joined in. And thank you so much to the mentors and planning committee that made this event possible. It was a very high-paced, quick event as I learned over the weekend. And I'd like to call the first winning hackathon team to the stage, B73 Tigers from the Bear Track. Well, we were given 24 hours this weekend to be, take the role as a plant breeder. And we created a evaluation system to find um, the right, basically, what plants would perform the best. So moving on into some of our, given the problem set that Bayer gave us, he gave us a lot of data, we went through that data and summarized it by the parents genetic markers. So we summarized a lot of the children's um, gene data into the parents and merged that with the children's um, data, that, how they performed in the actual environment. And we joined those data sets together to actually train a model. And we ended up um, finding a, making, um, testing multiple models, um, Ridge, Elastic Net, Lasso, Random Forest. And we decided to use, going forward, using this heavily penalized Ridge model, seeing these MSEs here. And we then fitted the genetic data, genetic markers of the children, um, getting some results here. So we can see that the ridge regression, um, testing on the, um, using 80 times 20 split, testing on the parents, we found that these genetic markers would actually be uh, most significant in that model. And then moving on to testing on the actual children's genetic markers, we got these um, distributions of error um, for test weight, moisture, and yield. And um, given the, the values that we found using our model and those children's um, genetic data, um, Amelia here went through and found the best um, hybrids between these two clusters that we repeated this, um, this evaluation system on to actually get, um, to actually create this system. So in conclusion, we used the parents genetic markers to, in a machine learning model, to predict which, the performance of the children effectively, and took those two children from cluster one and cluster two to um, create these best hybrids. Now some drawbacks, um, given this prompt, we wanted to actually eventually use, only given 24 hours, we would like to actually involve some environmental considerations. There's a lot of variability we did not account for, um, as well as some temporal consideration. Um, yeah. And then we removed a lot of the parents' genomic markers that did not have any um, data in them, so that decreased the, um, the size of our data set. It's only around 600 markers that we were training on. And moving forward, we want to kind of control for these factors, maybe using um, raster grid and kind of finding markers in certain areas, and maybe using a training test split that would actually um, train on past years and then test on the more recent years to control for some more temporal variability. And in the application. Thank you. I'd love to learn a little bit more about the team here. If you could share your name, your year in school, and what you were majoring in, that would be excellent. Yeah, so I'm Spencer, and I am a senior in statistics. Hi, my name is Amelia Nelson, and I'm actually a bachelor's. I'm a junior in computer science and crop sciences.
Um, hi, I'm Iris. I'm a second year master's student and my um, major is crop science and I also have a concentration in bioinformatics and I think I would love to work in this kind of environment which we work with agricultural data set and make predictions. I think I'll be really happy to work in this kind of job. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sajid. I am basically a PhD student in agriculture and biological engineering. Uh, my name is Feng Chin Shou, and my major is agriculture engineering too, and it's my first year of the PhD, and also it's the first time of my action. <laughs> yeah, so I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Can anyone tell us the significance of B73 tigers? Okay. Um, because we are thinking about our data is about corn, and B73 is one, one of the most common corn hybrids, so we, we think that it would be cool to name our team B73 and tiger. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. You can take a seat now. Thank you again to Bear for sponsoring that track. We're now going to transition to the John Deere track, and the team name is Juan Deere. So if those students could join us. Okay, thank you. First, we'd like to, of course, thank uh, Research Park and John Deere and Bear for sponsoring the hackathon. It was a very fast weekend, but a very fun weekend as well. So. Uh, I'm Avery Plody. I'm a senior in computer science and crop sciences. Hi everyone, my name is Will Garrett. I'm a freshman in computer science. Hello everyone, my name is Alec Thompson. I'm a senior in computer engineering and entrepreneurship. Uh, hi, my name is Shifij and I'm a sophomore in computer science. Hi everyone, my name is Albert Chen. I'm a junior studying finance and information systems. And to kind of give you a little bit of background on our prompt, uh, we were asked by John Deere to come up with an idea to either uh, improve an existing feature or implement a new feature for John Deere Operations Center, which is their kind of ecosystem for farm management and uh, managing equipment and all that sort of thing. So um, yeah, we'll start off with our presentation. So currently in agriculture, as the agricultural uh, data environment continues to expand, Farmers need tools to make the best use of that data. And one such area that we thought wasn't currently being uh, taken account of as good as it possibly could would be soil data. And so um, basically we believe that we can make a, a tool within John Deere Operations Center to take advantage of all that soil data which farmers are already collecting. So currently within Operations Center, this is the main sort of soil data which you're able to see, which is soil type. And this uh, picture here is actually a soil test or a, uh, a view of the soil types of one of my family's farms, which is kind of rare. It's mostly one soil type, but that also means that you don't really get much information um, about what's going on in that field. And in comparison, here's a soil test from that same field where you can see there's a lot of variation throughout the field. And so we wanted to take use of that soil data and turn it into a comprehensive tool to visualize and see the soil health within that field. So here's how the entire process would work from start to finish. So already the John Deere Operations Center takes in some input parameters such as soil type and harvest yield. And these are collected from uh, machine sensors and from online data. But um, of course these aren't you know, fully comprehensive. But farmers take soil tests about once every three to five years. And uh, we would then let these uh, farmers import the soil test data into the application. And it would be immediately stored in the John Deere database. So that could be used like, to train models for market research, whatever have you. And then all of these input parameters would be combined together. And they would be uh, synthesized and compared to one another through the NutriView algorithms. And then the user would be presented with an intuitive interface that allows them to create their own more accurate prescription maps and also view more intuitive visualizations of easily di digestible information, such as NutriScores. Awesome. Thanks, Will. Um, so like Will said, we have the NutriScore here. If you're familiar with the John Deere kind of operation center layout, 
or fetal analyzer, it probably doesn't look uh, much different, but that's basically because the neutral score is simply a layer here in this case. So uh, it's, it's essentially a, a soil health map on a scale from zero to 100, trying to give you a better idea than just using the um, soil testing data, using other data like yield or even like mass scale kind of soil data that you get going through the field. Um, so then you can go and select whatever nutrient you want from this to get a map that's similar to this uh, Nutra score, but for that specific nutrient. So you can see this dropping down here. You can select something like organic matter, pH, NPK, all, pretty much all of your all of your nutrients, and get some more valuable information right here from the field analyzer um, window. So um, as Alec mentioned, in addition to providing an overall score, we also give essential information about the micronutrients, organic matter, and pH levels. Um, this a farmer can do this by simply uh, clicking on the option he wants to know more about from the drop-down menu, and this provides some key statistics. But more importantly, it gives a spread of the potassium map, and uh, if, uh, if the farmer wants to know uh, the value at any given point, he can just click on it and know more about uh, the potassium content at that point. Yeah. Uh, so then, how does the farmer actually get a whole lot of value from this? Well, then they can just go basically to John Deere's prescription generator, and instead of using something like the soil type map, like the circular data that we saw earlier, they can select NutriView as the layer, as the input data, which would then result in more accurate prescription maps um, for applying nutrients. Yeah, so we believe that uh, NutriView represents a significant leap for both farmers and John Deere on the farmer's side, they're able to get better data analysis and the ability to produce more accurate prescription maps, which will lead to reduced costs and increase in crop yield. On John Deere's side, they're able to gather more data and leverage that data for various internal operations. So we believe that NutriView is a very vital tool that could position John Deere as a forefront and leader in agricultural innovation and the ability to tackle on precision farming has on. Thank you very much.